I swear, these are the greatest Cheez-Its ever created. It's insane. Try it. Cheddar, sour cream, and onion. Testing, 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 testing. I suck at cutting hair. I'm blackballed from YouTube. YouTube page. What's good, YouTube? Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to sharpen your trimmers. It's a simple process. This is my process. This is what works for me. So today this is gonna be the trimmer that I'm gonna be sharpening. It already is sharp, but I haven't sharpened in a couple months. So we're gonna get it back, right? There's two major components that go into making a trimmer hit. You have the motor and then you have the blade. Both are equally important. Why? Just like a car, what's the most important part of the car? The engine. That's why it's extremely expensive to replace. That's one of the most important components that goes into a trimmer, the motor. Because you can have a perfect blade, a perfectly set blade, but the motor can be trash and your trimmers will not be reliable. Your trimmers will not hit. Now they may hit with certain textures, but they won't be as versatile. They won't be able to remove bulk. You wanna make sure your trimmer has a good motor. You could just feel when the trimmer motor is good. Like this one, it has a good motor. Like I could feel the power in the hand. With manufacturing companies like this, Fabulous and this wall, sometimes there's just bad batches. It's unfortunate to say, I know they all try their hardest to put out quality clippers every time, but unfortunately some of the bad clippers get mixed in with the good. The second part obviously that goes into a trimmer is the blade both blades actually so as you can see we have the steel blade right here and the cutter blade right here now what the steel blade does is it basically that's where you're pressing down this is going to be your guide and what's actually cutting the hair is the cutter blade that's why that's the part that moves back and forth when you turn your trimmer on this part stays still so we call this a steel blade and we call this a cutter blade i recommend setting your trimmers just close enough so as you can see my trimmers are close but they're not completely zero gap you see that gap they're not completely gapped so I recommend setting them just like this and the reason why I have them set this way is because you never need to zero gap your trimmers you don't have to put it all the way up you know when I was doing it I was a rookie and this way I could cut kids with this I could do hairlines I could remove bulk I can do beards I can shape the neck up with this it's versatile this is my versatile clipper all my trimmers that I have are versatile so we're gonna get into the process of sharpening it. Basically, once you have your trimmer blade set, I have mine set already. What we're gonna do is remove this. We're gonna remove both blades. We're not gonna disconnect them. We're gonna keep them together because we're gonna sharpen both of them at the same time. So these are all the tools that you're gonna need. If you need to find any of these, they will be down below in the description on my Amazon storefront. So click the storefront, click Barber Essentials and all these products will be on there. This is basically a knife sharpening grit stone. And what a grit is, it's double-sided. Basically, if you rub a material on there, it'll grit it down. I basically sharpen my blades by dulling them if that makes sense. First thing you're gonna wanna do is remove your blade. What most people don't understand about these Babyliss blades is they actually work better when they're worn out. When they're fresh out the box, yeah, there's some may hit, but trimmer blades like these get sharper over time and with usage. Once you have your blade taken off, you're gonna wanna set it to your liking. Since mine is already set, we're not gonna take them apart. Once again, I recommend doing it just under it. Don't go up to the gold part, just under it. Once your blades are set, you're gonna place it like this and drag it down. You're gonna hear a grit sound. Don't go back and forth. Just go in this one direction and do that for a couple minutes. So once you've done it for a couple minutes, you're gonna have this dust on your trimmer blade. Don't worry about it. What we're gonna do now is flip it backwards and do the same thing. You're gonna to wanna to do this for a couple minutes also. So as you can see all that build up from the grit, you're gonna to wanna to wipe it off. Then you're gonna to wanna to put it back onto your clipper. You do wanna spray your trimmer just to clear out all that grit that was stuck in it and wipe it down with the towel. And there you have it. So we're gonna see how it hits and we'll be back.
for YouTube, as you can see, they hit. They're flexible trimmer. It's I recommend not zero gap, and I'm telling y'all. The takeaway from this video that I hope you guys take away is the two most important parts about a trimmer: the blade and the motor. Especially the motor. You can have a great trimmer, but the motor's trash and it just won't do what it needs to do. I hope this video was helpful. This technique is very unconventional because a lot of people would say that I'm doling out the blade, which in a way I am, but I'm basically doling them out to make them sharper because these blades over usage get sharper, if that makes sense. Don't ask me why, I don't know why. I'm not an expert with this stuff, but this is, once again, what works for me. But if you guys wanna purchase any of the tools that I have in this video, make sure you guys go down into my description and click the Amazon link where it says my Amazon storefront. Everything will be there under the Barber Essentials category. But I'll do it for this video. We still drop in every day for the next two weeks. Appreciate the continued support. It's the fourth Ken, and I'm out. Peace.